you saw my last video, you know that we are celebrating 10 years of Pretty Pink Posh this month. In the last video, I shared a whole bunch of cards. Today, I wanna share an interactive card and a treat box. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel, and in today's video, I'll be focusing on the Pretty Pink Posh Interactive Cake Die and the Birthday Treat Box Die. Let's start by putting together some really cute and easy to assemble treat boxes. The main die for the interactive treat box die is this piece on the left. It's all in one die and it can fit on half of an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. So that makes it really nice that it's going to fit through your basic die cut machines. It doesn't need an extra large machine and you don't need extra large paper. You can see that there are little dash lines where you'll fold. These are not just score lines, they're actually little cuts. So you don't even need to use a bone folder because they will fold really easily. This is a little die that you can put on the side with the dip in the front to create a window. So you can see how the dip in the window matches the dip at the top and that's how you'll know you're on the right side there the die set also has dies to create a bow a little party hat and candles for the window I'm cutting a piece of acetate I'm lining it up behind the treat box so I flipped it over so we're working on the back here and I'll cut the acetate just slightly larger than the opening for this window because I want to be able to adhere the acetate down to the back of the treat box die cut so slightly larger I may have to trim it a bit to make it fit you don't want it over the fold lines because then you won't be able to fold I'm using score tape today it is double sided thin tape that is very strong so I'll be using that to adhere the treat boxes together and here to adhere the window to the back of the treat box so the nice thing about this score tape is it tears really easily but it's super strong so I don't know how that works but <laughs> it does so once you have all four pieces down and you can just go over them with a bone folder or like I did with my finger there and then peel off those protective protective layers so that you would reveal the adhesive all around that open die cut area that is going to be our treat box window so you'll be able to see the treats from the front of the treat box. Then lay that acetate down onto the back of that treat box and I'm using acetate from Spellbinders. It's a little thick which is nice because I know it's going to be sturdy so it's not a super thin acetate and I like that especially for this purpose. For the candles, I've cut them out in colors and then in yellow for the flames, and I'll just snip off the colorful flames and then layer the colorful candle over the yellow candles so that I can easily create candles of different colors and they'll all have yellow flames. I'm using the My Sweet Petunia Precision Glue Press, and I've heard it's back in stock at My Sweet Petunia. So if you've been looking to grab one, now might be the time. I love using this thin liquid adhesive to adhere down thin die cuts like this. You can see that it makes it really easy to create a thin line. I also like the handle that you squeeze rather than trying to squeeze the life out of a bottle. For me, it's a lot easier this way. Okay, so I have a couple of candles and I'm adhering a little blue pom-pom down to a green party hat. Again, I just cut the die out of two colors and that gives me two colors to create with. I'll also cut one out of yellow and then place a green pom-pom on top of that. So you have a couple of options here to decorate your treat box just with the dies that come in the die set. You have, like I mentioned, the the little party hats, the candles, and a little bow, as well as that window that you can die cut out. I'm using some foam adhesive. It's okay if it shows on the window because 
you won't be able to see it from the outside. So I will cover up a couple of the corners of the windows there with my candles and my party hat. I think this looks so cute just as is, but I did want to add a little sentiment. So I've grabbed the Pretty Pink Posh Sentiment Strips Birthday stamp set. I'll stamp that out to say it's party time and then I'll use the sentiment strip dies to cut it out and again a little bit of adhesive this time on the left and the right because it's touching the die cuts that are popped up so I didn't want adhesive in the center because I didn't want it to dip down. Now to create the treat box you just need a couple of pieces of score tape or some type of heavy duty adhesive on two edges of the treat box. It can be the top or the bottom, it does not matter. So you'll peel off those protective layers and then we're gonna fold it all together. So you can fold up or down, it really doesn't matter. What you wanna be careful of is creating a nice line at the bottom. So you want the bottom to be as straight as possible. Those two pieces coming together, not tight. You don't want it too tight. You wanna give yourself room for treats in there, but coming together flat at the bottom so that it will stand up. And it looks like a little french fry container, which is so cute, and I love the window. It's okay if it's got the little cracks at the bottom, it still stands up perfectly. I wanted to use the Pretty Pink Posh Birthday Cupcakes stamp set, so I'm coloring that in with some Ohuhu markers. I've stamped it on alcohol-friendly cardstock using alcohol marker-friendly ink, and then I just color them in. I'm doing pretty simple coloring with a lot of pinks for this one because this treat box is going to be all in pinks. And once it's done there, I like to outline everything sometimes. It gives just a finished look to that, especially for something fun like a little cupcake like that. And then I'll cut out the die. You can also cut the candles out of white cardstock and then color the flames in. So I'll leave that little bottom piece of the flame white. That'll be the wick and then the flame itself will be yellowy orange and then you can color the candle anything you want. And that has this stitched lines across it so I thought I would make my candles striped in pink and white and using markers on that cardstock makes it really easy to customize any color that you want. You could do the hats like that as well. I decided to cut the pom-pom for this little blue hat out of white cardstock and add little pink dots around it. And now I'll add some white gel pen dots on the party hat. I added some on the cupcake as well. A little bit of liquid glue at the top of the party hat and then place that little pom-pom just overlapping. The sentiment this time is from the same stamp set. It says make a wish, same dies to cut it out. And I'll use foam adhesive to pop up all of my die cuts and my stamped and die cut image. This time I don't have a window. I am just covering the entire thing with cute little images and my sentiment as well. You can see I cut the bow out of gold mirror card stock. Again, two strips of score tape. This time I'm doing them at the top. Last time I did them on the bottom piece. So I just wanted to show you it does not matter which piece. I am working on the front of the treat box here. So I have my adhesive strips on the side. I'll pull off those protective layers and then I'll start folding everything together. So you can see I don't really crisp fold the bottom. I kind of have it so that it's just a little bit like a fry container where it's got that dip. And the most important thing, like I mentioned, is that the two side flaps, one with the adhesive, one without, make a nice straight line at the bottom. So you can see it resting on my thumb there to make sure that they line up nicely. It doesn't need to go 
all the way to the fold. You just want it sort of in the center, just enough to cover up the adhesive, honestly. And then just make sure that the bottom is nice and flat. This way, it will stand up. It's okay if it has a little bit of a bump like that. You can press it in, and then it will look just like that little fry box. So here's my two treat boxes here, and I wanted to show you how much you can fill these with. So I have a whole bunch of Hershey Kisses in the pink box. You could also slip a gift card in there like that. I put a couple of pencils in there. That sticks out a lot, but it still looks cute. And then look at all the Starburst I was able to fit in the blue box as well as a little gift card as well. So these tree boxes really fit a ton of little goodies so you can really have fun stuffing them with lots. Now let me show you how easy it is to create this interactive cake die that can also be used to hold a gift card. Here are all the dies that come with the interactive cake die. I know it looks like a lot, but most of them are decorative, so don't worry. Here are the two dies that create the cake layers. The smaller layer is going to slide up and down and go inside that bottom larger layer. There's a tab that says pull on it and you'll connect that to the top so you can pull it out. Here are some decorative frostings, different looks to put on the cake. There's also little hearts that you can decorate it with. You can put either hearts or flowers at the tips of the swirls on the side of the cake. There are also candles and flames and there's a little sentiment that says yay. This die cuts the tabs that you can use as the gift card holder. So I'm cutting it out of the smaller layer of cake. And you can see your gift card will just sit in those three tabs, two on the sides and one at the bottom. And then this layer will pull in and out of that larger layer at the bottom. I decided to put the gift card on the back of the layer so I could decorate this layer of cake as well. I cut out both pieces of the frosting circles and I'll cut one down so that I can fit it at the very top of the smaller layer of cake and I'll just use a little liquid adhesive to place that on the layer so I can slide it into place and make sure it's nice and straight. And this is starting to already look like a little cake and the little pull tab will go right there so that you can pull out that layer. So I'll put a little bit of liquid adhesive at the bottom of the pull tab and then tuck it behind that top layer. Not too far because you wanna be able to actually handle the tab and also see the little sentiment that says pull. So once that's dry, I'll be able to pull on that tab and slide it in and out of the bottom layer of cake. Next, I'll put a little frosting on the larger layer here to cover up those dips in the scallop and a little bit of liquid adhesive behind the entwined hearts. This is going to be the main decoration in the center of my large layer. I did want to use these swoopy frostings as well though, so I'll place those sort of towards the bottom, but not all the way down so you can see that they're decorating the cake. And then I have these little blue flowers that will go at all the points of the frosting swoops there. So just a little dot of adhesive and then you can place those little die cuts on there. You could also use, like I mentioned before, hearts or they have circles for this part as well. For the candles and the flames, I cut the candles out of the same blue cardstock as the flowers and cut the flames out of yellow cardstock and just adhere the flames down to the candles. So now I want to see where I'm going to place the top layer and how far down I want it to go. I don't want it to go any further than this. I don't want it to sneak all the way down. I want it to just pop up a little bit still. So I'll place a piece of foam tape in the spot where I want the top layer to catch in the back and then I'll snip that on the side. Then I need to place foam strips underneath so that that cake layer doesn't smush down at the bottom and one on each side to hold that top layer in place as it slides in and out. I don't want it to go out the side. 
So little strips of foam tape on the side. You just wanna make sure you leave enough room for that small layer to fit in between those foam strips. Here I decided to use the yay that I cut out of gold mirror cardstock on the top layer. This yay is going to be hidden until they pull out the top layer and that will be kind of nice to see something behind that top layer when you pull it out. Now I'll take some candles and adhere those behind the top layer as well. So I'll have one on each side of the pull tab. I don't wanna go crazy here with too much, but I did wanna use all the little pieces cause they're all so cute. So you can see how it's going to sit like this and then come out. I flipped the card around so it was white on the front. You can do whatever you want. If you want it to stick out so that they see it real well, uh, you can flip it so that the front is facing you. But once they pull it out, they'll be able to see what it is. Next, I've grabbed a combination of Dilution Shimmer Spray and Distress Mica Spray. And I'm using just a white piece of cardstock in the background and spritzing these three colors down onto the cardstock to create a color burst in the background. Since my cake is mostly white with a little bit of pink and blue, I decided to make a really bright and vibrant background of those colors. So I'm taking off a little bit here and there. There was one spot that was so dark, so I was trying to just take a little bit off and not make it quite so neon, but you can see that I really like the way it came out. I love that the colors mix a little bit and blend. I'll also use some Dina Wakely Media Gloss Spray in white for some splatters here. I thought splatters on a birthday card, it kind of looks like confetti or little bits of frosting everywhere. And I'll take some tape runner and run it all over the back of this panel once it's dry and place it down on an A2 piece of white cardstock. I did cut it down to four by five and a quarter so that I could mat it. Now I'll take off all the protective layers of those foam strips that we have on the back of the largest layer of cake that goes on the bottom. Once all of those protective layers are removed, you want to place this as close to the bottom of the card as you can because you want the pull tab to be able to pull up without shooting off the card. So I have that large layer down. You can see how it's popped up. And then of course, at this point, I decided to add some white gel pen details, which I could have added way earlier, but I didn't think of it. And then with the little splatters of white in the background, I thought little white gel pen details on the cake would be cute too. So here you go. You can just slide that in. It's going to stop at the base, that foam tape that we put at the bottom, and it's not going to go off the side because we have foam tape on either side as well. I have a sentiment that says happy birthday to you and cut out with those sentiment strip dies, and I'll place that right at the top or underneath the frosting at the top layer of the cake. This is also going to keep it from going down too low as well. So this is just another way to make sure that layer stays exactly where you want it. So you can see it just sits right above the frosting on the large layer and underneath the frosting on the smaller layer. And I love that little pull tab that says pull, how you can decorate this layer, how you can add a gift card to the back. This is the easiest interactive card I've ever made. And the fact that it also holds a gift card really just makes me happy. I love dies like this that make it so easy to create cute little treat boxes and an interactive cake card that also holds a gift card. But I'd love to hear which supplies from the entire Pretty Pink Posh birthday release caught your eye. Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't seen the birthday card video I filmed with their release, check it out here. As always, I wanna thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Interactive cake. Interactive cake. Gift card holder. <laughs> one, one more time.